In this video, we'll be covering reporting services in SharePoint 2013. My name is Tavis Lovell, and I'm a senior SharePoint BI consultant with Rackspace. If you need to reach out to me, you can find me at tavis.lovell at rackspace.com, on my blog at www.tavislovell.com, or on Twitter at Tavis Lovell. In this video, we're going to talk about what reporting services is used for, we'll step through the prerequisites you'll need in order to complete this tutorial, and finally, we'll walk through creating our own reporting services report and deploying it to SharePoint. Reporting services is a component of Microsoft SQL Server that allows you to create, view, and manage reports. It deploys in two modes, native mode, where reports are deployed to a report manager URL, and SharePoint integrated mode, which allows you to deploy reports directly to SharePoint document libraries. With reporting services, you can connect to a wide range of data sources, including SQL Server and SharePoint lists. Reporting services is ideal for operational reports where the format of the report is well defined. There are also a variety of dashboard friendly visualizations, including charts, graphs, dials, maps, sparklines, and data bars. For business and power users, reporting services includes an intuitive report authoring tool called Report Builder. In order to successfully complete this tutorial, you'll need to have the following prerequisites. A Reporting Services 2012 instance configured in SharePoint integrated mode. This configuration will not be covered in this video, however it is covered in depth in the Business Intelligence chapter of the ROCKS publication titled Professional SharePoint 2013 Administration. Secondly, you'll need to have the AdventureWorks DW2012 sample database installed. The AdventureWorks sample database can be downloaded for free at the link shown in the slide. Last but not least, you'll need to have SQL Server 2012 data tools installed on your machine in order to develop the report. If you don't have these tools installed on your computer, they can be installed from your SQL Server 2012 media. Before we start the tutorial, let's take a quick look at what our goal is. In this example, we want to create a report that pulls data from our AdventureWorks database for internet sales that have occurred within the United States. In the chart at the top, we want to show how our sales are concentrated by state across the US. Below in a data table, we want to show the exact sales amount for each state. And finally, we want users to be able to filter on the education level of the customer. Now that we've got our goal in mind, let's build this report from the ground up. The first thing I want to do here is open up our SQL Server data tools, which will be under our Microsoft Visual Studio 2010 folder. And then we'll want to create a new project by going to File, New, and then Project. And underneath the Business Intelligence template, we'll want to select Report Server Project. And we're just going to leave the default name for now and then click OK. Next, we'll want to create a data source to our AdventureWorks database. So on the Shared Data Sources folder, right click it and then go to Add New Data Source. And we'll rename this real quick. And then we'll leave the type as Microsoft SQL Server and then click Edit and add our server name, which in my case is just SQL, and then select our database. We'll click Test Connection real quick and then OK, and then OK again. Next, we'll create our report by right clicking on the Reports folder and then going to Add, New Item, and then Report. And we'll call this report US Internet Sales. Once the report is created, you'll have a new report data window on the left hand side. And we'll need to associate our report with our shared data source over here. So we'll right click on data sources, go to add data source, and select use shared data source reference and then select AdventureWorks and click OK. 
Next, we'll want to add our data set uh, that will contain the data that we'll actually use in our report. So right click on data set, go to add data set, and use a data set embedded in my report. And we'll select our data source on our report. And then open up the query designer. And here we'll want to add our tables. So we'll click the add tables icon. And we're going to use the dim customer, dim geography, and fact internet sales. I'm just adding these by double clicking on them. And then click close. And I'll go ahead and open this all the way up so we get a little bit better picture. And you can see that it's already created the from statement of our SQL based on the relationships inside of the database. So next we just need to select the data that we're actually going to use. In DIM geography, we're going to use state province name and country region code. On the customers table, we're going to use English education. And then in fact, internet sales, we are going to use the sales amount. Now we've got to do a little extra work here in this middle section. Uh, for country region code, we're going to use this as a filter. So we don't actually want to show it in our result set. So we're going to deselect the output check mark. And then in the filter box, we're going to type US. And that will create our where statement in our SQL clause. Next, for English education, we also do not want to show this in our results set. We want to use this to filter the data based on a parameter. So in the filter box, we'll create a parameter name by typing at and then the name of the parameter, uh, which in our case is going to be education level. Now for the remaining two columns, state province name and sales amount, we're going to sum sales amount, which means we'll also need to group state province name. Let's do that. We're going to click on the use group by icon up here at the top, and that'll open up a new column. Uh, and we will select, instead of group by, we'll select sum for sales amount. And we want to re alias our sales amount to actually be sales amount instead of expression one. All right, that is the data set that we'll use for the main body of our report. So we're just going to go ahead and click OK. And then OK again. And next we're going to go ahead and add the map to the canvas of our report. So you want to scroll over the toolbox icon over here on the left and then double click on the map icon and this will open up a wizard that we're going to use. So we'll leave the default selection of map gallery selected and we'll go down and change this to use USA by state inset and then select next. On the second screen we're just going to select all the default options and then click next. And on the third screen we want to change this to use a color analytical map and then click next. The data set we want to use is just data set one that we just created and we'll go ahead and click next. And this screen is asking us how we want to associate the state data with each state in the map. We're going to use state name, which is shown here, and we'll select our state province name and then click next. For the field to visualize, we're going to be visualizing the data based on the sum of our sales amount. And for the color rule, we'll change this to white blue, which is going to start off at white for lower amounts, and then for higher amounts, it will get a darker shade of blue. Then click Finish. And there's our map. Next, we want to add a data table to our report to show the specific sales amount by state. So we'll expand our report body here a little bit and then go over to Toolbox, 
drag table onto the canvas of our report. And then we'll add our data elements by just dragging them from our data set. Okay, if we click on preview, we'll see that we have to actually type in the parameter for education level. And we want users to just select this from a drop down box. So if we go back to design and back to data set, right click on it and click add data set, we're going to again use an embedded data set, select our data source, open query designer. This time we'll just add the dim customer table and English education as the column. And we're going to uh, select the group by button to show distinct values. Then click OK and OK again. And now we'll go up to our parameters folder double click on our education level parameter and under available values we'll select get values from a query select our data set 2 and then use English education for both the value and the label fields and then click OK. Now when we go to preview we should be prompted with a drop down box. So that's working uh, pretty much like we wanted it to. All that's really left to do is a little bit of formatting here. So I'm going to take care of some of that real quick. I'll maybe go ahead and add a report header here. this a little bit bigger. Center it. And maybe change the background of this as well. So we'll change the background to black. And then change the text of our label here to be white. And down here in our data table, I'll highlight both of these, make them bold, increase their font size a little bit. And we can delete this third column here. And then for our sales amount, we'll do a little bit of formatting by right clicking on it, going to text box properties, number, currency, Drop the decimal places to zero and show uh, comma separators for thousands. And I think that should pretty much be it. We'll click preview and see how it looks. And that looks pretty good. Next we will uh, want to deploy this report to SharePoint. So we'll need to go up to our project here and right click on it and go to properties. And we'll need to set the uh, where we want to deploy this report to. And the fields we're really interested in are uh, everything that starts with target here, except for the last one. So uh, I've already written this down ahead of time. For the target server URL, you want to have just the uh, URL to your SharePoint site. And then for the rest of them, you'll want the URL to the actual document library that you want to deploy your report to. Then click apply and OK. And then to deploy your report, you just right click on the project and then go to deploy. You can see deploy has started down here. And eventually we should see an output window pop up showing us the progress. There we go. And it has been successful. 
So next we'll want to navigate to our report library in SharePoint that we just deployed to, which I already have open here. I'll go ahead and refresh it. And we can see our report data source and our report. Now we'll want to edit our data source real quick by going to edit data source definition. And we're going to use a service account here since we don't have Kerberos configured in this environment. Now obviously I don't recommend using an administrator account in a production environment. Uh, this is just a test environment that's used on my computer so uh, we're going to get away with it here. Click test connection and we can see the connection was created successfully and then click OK. Now we should be able to open up our report and view it. And it looks like everything is working as planned. So I think that pretty much wraps it up for our reporting services tutorial. Once again, my name is Tavis Lovell and thanks for watching.